welcome all. I think we all know one another, so I don't think there's a need for round robin introductions. Uh, this, this is a joint meeting of the Finance Committee and Select Board, and we do this on a yearly basis uh, for the sole purpose of coming to a budget, which is the sole responsibility of the Finance co Committee to present to town on town floor in April. Um, this format allows us to have discussions that are open and get a better understanding of what's behind the numbers as presented by the boards and they don't have to do it twice because the select board and the finance committee are here at one time. So um, this is an official meeting of the finance committee at the same time and our um, our responsibilities will be put off towards the end of the meeting tonight because we have some honored guests and we thank them for coming um, so we're going to uh, first of all did everyone read the minutes finance committee and make a motion we accept the minutes second all those in favor Aye. Aye. that's out of the way okay good all righty um, I'm going to take a page from the Frontier Regional School Committee meeting and up front I will ask is there any public comment? This will be public comment time. No? Okay, great. Let's go into, um, Brian do you want to say anything before this? Think so before we start okay so um, we are reviewing tonight schools public health public works water department enterprise fund and capital projects we're going to start with schools it's my understanding that school budgets are not <laughs> quite to the point where they're ready for public consumption but all the players are here so it would be wonderful to hear about the budget. So let's take... We have seats up front if they'd like. And we have seats up front. Um, um, let's take uh, Frontier Regional High School first. And then Can we do the elementary first? There's yeah. some people that have to leave. I'm sorry. Certainly. Not me. <laughs> yes, we are accommodating. <laughs> let's, do, let's do Whaley Elementary first. Okay. Do you all know Chrissy Curtin, new principal? Everybody here met her at some point here. I, don't know if this was. I did meet her. Does everybody else? Um, that's the new principal. Yeah. So Chrissy, you get to come up to the table too. Yeah. Sure. Just so they, just so you can put the your smile next to the budget there. No. No. Um, <coughs> and do you guys? This is uh, Dr. Hull. Hi. Hi. Sorry. Hi. Nice to meet you all. She is um, with TMS, who we are using as a. Um, is a business um, business firm for our school business department this year. So, and so Judy's going to take the lion's share of presenting the budget. Um, and when you guys get, all get a copy, she will walk you through. I'll hand it over to her, and she can walk you through. So, the elementary budget is in a good spot to be looking at. Um, so. Um, there was a meeting this morning where they, the school committee put on their touches and I'm sure they'll chime in at any time necessary. Okay. Um, obviously, we have never, we have not seen this. Um, so, there is a lot to digest, there's a lot to <coughs> overview. Um, so, what do you think would be the best approach? Um, probably the best approach is to sort of tell you where I have traveled in terms of building this budget. Um, as we went through the process of building the, the budget for FY20, um, 
and I went looking into all of the funds that, that feed into the total expenses of the school. Um, they took a look at school choice um, as one of the funding sources that the school department uses and realized that we were frightfully close to what's called the funding cliff in school choice, that the amount of expenses that have been put against school choice is far and away eclipsing the amount of school choice dollars coming in to the school. Um, and so we had to be mindful of that as we built the budget this year. <coughs> in terms of taking some salaries that were previously offset by school choice in whole or in part and moving some of them back into the local budget uh, in order to not cause a problem down the road. Um, in the long term, this is something that the town is going to have to look at very carefully because the amount of money that has been previously budgeted in school choice to help offset the costs of running the school the income coming in is not where at a level of the spending and so therefore you're now at almost the tipping point on all of this so I think that's probably the key place to start the journey and that's really what started a lot of conversation around this particular budget so um, on page two of the handout that I gave you is sort of a uh, 30,000 foot view of where the budget has uh, traveled in uh, meetings that we've had together both this administration and with the school committee. You can see that um, salaries that are governed by collective bargaining agreements are up quite a bit. Number one, we have some step increases. Uh, there are steps within the salary scales that based on experience people um, attain year after year. Um, we have projected uh, an increase contract is up for negotiation at this particular juncture in time, so not at liberty to mention a number in public, but we have programmed something in there as a placeholder. Um, there is the need for an additional instructional assistant for special education that has been put in there. Um, in this current budget, we had to shift some money from classroom teachers into long-term subs. We'll shift that money back into regular classroom salaries, so that's what's put that up. And the big things that um, are driving that particular um, percentage increase is the shift of some salaries or at least some parts of salaries from school choice back into the local budget. This also represents having reduced a, a member of the staff, um, a guidance school psychologist position from 1.0 full-time equivalent to half-time. So those are the things that have gone in there. Um, so the long-term substitutes number shows a complete decrease because obviously we had to put some money in that for this year. We had a teacher who was out on long-term uh, leave. Um, so that is not anticipated to be an expenditure next year, so that's gone back into the teacher line. Uh, Non-union increases, a um, couple of things that, um, again, some projected uh, increases in salaries uh, for them as well. Um, and then there's also been a change in the cost of share, and I'll walk you through that in a couple minutes, actually, wait least cost share to both the regional and to the district uh, and to the union budgets has decreased a little bit because of shifting uh, enrollments. Um, the administrative increase looks large, but the reason why is because right now TMS is in as a consultant to uh, Frontier Regional and to Union 38 doing business services. Um, it is the superintendent's intent to hire a full-time business manager next year. Money was shifted out of that salary line to fund the contracted service. Money will shift back into the salary line to cover that position. So, so that 7.46 mm -hmm. represents, it does not represent a total increase in the administrative charge? It, it represents some salary increases by contract. Um, for the superintendent, for the principal, other positions within the district, but it also represents a shifting of the business manager salary from contracted services this year back into the business manager position. Operational changes, again, um, some slight decreases, again, because of the shift in the cost share among the towns. And you'll see again in, in business and administrative services, um, there is a decrease 
in the contracted services line, and that's because the TMS contract will end on July 31st. Um, what we will be doing is overlapping with the incoming business manager by a month so that there is a smooth and clean transition between the two. Um, so you can see those kinds of things. Uh, transportation is a slight increase. We went up to bid for transportation. The transportation bid came in at the town level at a pretty reasonable rate. So it wasn't as much as we had originally anticipated. However, we do have some special education transportation that is being paid by school choice. We're anticipating potentially a slight increase <coughs> with gas prices beginning to rise again. So we have factored in for that and we've put it on the local side rather than adding stress to school choice at this point in time. Um, some other things, just some, you know, again, normal uh, projected increases in custodial <coughs> services, a little bit in <coughs> utilities, um, maintenance of buildings a little bit as well. Um, there's um, some reduction, <coughs> excuse me, in network and telecom services because there's going to be some changes in licensing that's going to save the town some money as well. Um, health, dental, and life insurances, there is a slight change um, projected only because we wanted to put in a placeholder in case people change plans um, over the course of time. Um, we found out from the Hampshire Council of Governments that there will be no increase in the rates themselves for either dental or health insurance or FY20. So that's a good thing. And that number could have been much higher. Um, insurance again. Um, so you can see that there is actually a decrease in operational changes, um, but the net change is about 3.9%. <coughs> Can I ask a question? Why, sure. why the switch from the business manager from contractual to uh, administrative to employee? Joe here last year. Name wasn't. So I don't. You said you said that the twelve thousand here increased administration was his business manager position is now under administration rather than contractual. Was it contractual in the past and you're changing? No, <coughs> right before we had an in-house business manager, right now we're using contracted services. And so the actual contracted services was less than the budgeted in-house um, person. Last year, Fred. Oh, this last is a year, okay, it was contractual. Change. Before that, yeah. right. So was they, have, they had okay. to take an existing budget okay. and they changed those line items to move to a contracted um, um, service rather than an in-house service. Okay, I'm going back to in-house. So, that was a uh, that, that was obviously the uh, thirty thousand foot view of uh, what's ending up as a three point nine percent increase. Um, we look at numbers, obviously. Okay, we look at costs, but above all, we look at value. And what sort of gives us that happy feeling is when you know the costs have, uh, uh, well, will justify the perceived value that we're getting. So I'd have to ask the school committee <coughs> and administration, what was your goal this year? You have this budget, you've got the budget, you're asking for 3.9 percent, what do you want to do? What does the what does the school need? What what does this little school need to make it better go forward that is reflected in these costs that you're asking for? Maybe I can start. <coughs> Feel free to start. So I think more context to the situation is we have a new principal, so we've had a transition in leadership at the school. We have a new superintendent, Darius now officially our superintendent. Um, so as I'm very excited to bring new leadership to the school and to really um, get new ideas, new energy leading the school. We've already seen some great changes in terms of the collaboration of the teachers and more focus on the learning models and the assessments, which I think will pay off in the future. You know, it's so new. Every, they've only been in their roles very officially for like a month and Chrissy for a few months. So. I think my goal with this year's budget was to give them a chance to really um, create more of a long-term plan and vision for the school. 
ultimately, we have been really lucky with school choice. We have had a very healthy school choice population. We have 39 students this year. We had 43, I think, the year before. They fluctuated up and down, but that is really what's helped keep Waitley going. If we hadn't had that, we would have been having these, you would have been having these conversations quite a few years ago about how to fund the school. Because it's only one classroom, they're pretty much fixed costs <coughs> there to keep the school running. There's a record number of babies that were born, I think, in Whaley, which is great news for this town. It's a competitive market these days in the schools. We want to create the highest quality program that we can. And this is sort of the least, we would prefer to actually have more money to keep everything status quo. I think the important things for good quality schools are good teachers and good leadership. Those are the two highest things. 80% of our budget is salaries. So for me, it's about getting the right people in those jobs, paying them well, and holding everybody accountable for doing the best job they can. And how will we know that happens? I think enrollment is a bit of an indicator as to whether or not um, you know the school choice people stay. They are very fluid and they can come and go, and they do come and go very easily. So, you know, we've been able to retain the majority of those. I think that will be an indicator going forward. I think the new residents we want to make sure they're sending their kids to the school. Um, it's a lot of it's word of mouth, so we'll have to see what the word of mouth becomes. Cutting the budget is not going to create better word of mouth for the school. I think enhancing the program is what will create that. And really, having a great program. <coughs> I don't know if anybody else wants to add to that. But. Well, this morning when we had our meeting this morning, we actually had, we had a, like a version one and a version two. Mm -hmm. So version one was higher. And, and I'm not going to tell you what the percentage was, but it was higher. And, and I said, we, we can't come in front of you folks with a higher budget. You know, I'm, I'm not keen on the 3.9, but this takes care of what, what we need there uh, with making, vibe, you know, a couple little changes. You know, I've been there a long time, you know. You guys used to pound us. You got to use that school choice money. You got to use that school what's choice the, money. What's the impact when a school choice diminishes and every school in the county is cannibalizing each other for students. What's yeah. the impact? Well, we're, it's not just, we're actually it's not just in Rowling here. That now. It's at every school right. in the county. Right, and <coughs> it's, a, it's a survival of the fittest. I mean, we are it shouldn't kind of, be like that. Education it shouldn't should not have be to be like, like that. that, but that's not our control right now. Yeah, that right. We can, all Absolutely. we can do is control our school, and mm -hmm. I would argue we want to have a school in Wheatley. I think it makes the town stronger. I think it provides a much higher quality of life. And if we're going to keep the school going, then that's going to be a big funding commitment for the town going forward um, so we recognize that but we're also if we're going to have a school we should make sure we provide um, as much as we can I think we have to make sure we're meeting the full scope of the students too you know there's students who have extra needs there are students that maybe need to be pushed a little harder and have aspirational needs we don't want to lose either of those going forward and that's expensive the costs of running a school are outpacing the revenues that are coming in that's sure. the fundamental problem right. with the school budget. Right. And it's uh, and that was the state's goal when they created the charter <laughs> school model. They want schools to be competitive. They want schools to compete amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. And if you don't compete, and if you don't, if you don't go out and and sort of blow your own horn, right? Nobody else is going to do that. And and and. You know, we're seeing the result of that. We're seeing it at the at the high school, and um, you know now he is. And I'm really excited about our new leadership. I think we have a veteran teacher who has been teaching for 20 years and moved into uh, administration recently. I think the teachers really respect that and respond to that. Um, and we have Darius, who's really committed to the district and knows how it works, but also has good new ideas. So I think it could be a real turning point us in terms of our schools and how they're used. Well, we hope so. Okay, can I ask a question? Sure. Well, can, can you explain a little bit more about the, the shifting of the costs from, from school choice to um, the town appropriation? It is, are we going to have a big hit 
this year as we shift those costs and it will be less the next year, assuming school choice stays relatively even, or is every year going to be, we're going to have to be shifting salaries more to the town appropriation? It is something you will need to be mindful of, um, all of you here at this table. For example, if you look at the cherry sheets, which are on, um, starting on page three, if you look at um, the chart, the school choice receiving tuition, where it says offset receipts, you'll notice that the original estimate for um, FY 2019 was $281,729. The governor's budget, that 230393 is real now. There is a December adjustment that happens in school choice. October 1 is a big date for public schools to report their enrollment to the state. And at that point, school choice claims are adjusted. And so that number already has decreased from what we thought would be 281 to $230,000. So there's a $51,000 issue in this fiscal year, never mind moving forward. And so moving forward, you operate on the $230,000 number. Next December, there will be another adjustment. It could be an adjustment up. It could be an adjustment down. It's really <coughs> difficult to know. Didn't he just come out and say he wanted to put more money into education? Mm -hmm. They're working on it. Yeah, the foundation uh, commissions um, you know, has made some pretty strong recommendations, and I think the governor's plan is not quite what the Foundation Commission had uh, looked at. So I think that if the, uh, both the Senate and the House mm -hmm. are trying to do something, uh, Chapter 70 may come in higher. It usually does anyway, um, but uh, you won't see the House version of the budget probably until around April-ish, and then you won't see the Senate version until late May. So. And which, you know, with many town meetings makes this whole process very difficult <coughs> because you're trying to make the best decisions but be conservative about what you think is coming in for revenues. So we right now have used um, the governor's numbers just as a thought process about what revenues might be coming into the district and we're not necessarily going to the bank with anything that's, that is an unknown at this point. So, so we keep again. This doesn't really impact this current budget, but and I've had conversations with both Chrissy and Darius about this, that because school competition is the driver of this budget, and because we live in, and, and die based upon our school, our school age population and our, our school choice in, school choice out, I, I guess in future years, I'd be interested in seeing both qualitative assessments of why students are coming here as opposed to just saying thank you for showing up on day one. Understanding why they're coming here so that we can replicate that going forward. But I also think that we need to really assess, based upon those responses, whether an, infl an increased budget for certain items will even better attract certain types of students. And I, I know I've pushed these guys and, and administrations in the past about having a gifted and talented program that probably costs 60 or $70,000 additional. But if that brings in more families and more school choice, both residential and, 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 and out of town, then it's money well spent both for our current students and our future students. And I, I'd like to have a real conversation about how do we do a better job attracting those students because if we don't, to Paul's point, we're treading water. And treading water doesn't work in the age of school competition. So a gifted and talented program to find money for for individual devices for every student because that's 21st century learning. And I and I know I heard a comment here last year saying, well, you know, not everyone can, you know, we can't afford private school education. Well, we should be able to provide every child that kind of an education. And, I want to know what it would take, and maybe we can't afford it, but we don't even know what it would take to do that. At this point. Mm -hmm. That's exactly you're, you're exactly right. Um, we don't know, and I, I've said this in the, I think we all said this in the past. It's look, we're all volunteers here, with the exception of just a couple, but for the most part, we're all volunteers. You got so much time to spend on this throughout the year, throughout the months. And 
you know, to, um, to, to think we can come up with the magic bullet year in and year out is, you know, is a farce. So that's not going to happen. All we can do is our best. So, what is our best? You know, I think we've asked in the past, you know, what's the Cadillac plan? You know, we're probably not going to see it because to put the energy into the Cadillac plan to come here for us to say no, you're going to drive off with a Toyota. Well, you know, year after year of Toyotas, and you're good at building Toyotas. Um, and we're not great at building Cadillacs. Okay. And I, I think we can get there. Um, and to say that you can't provide a private school education, I think you can. You can't provide the environment. Okay, but you can provide the education. I still think the best teachers walking are in the public school system, hands down. Um, and I would fight that tooth and nail, but um, what's it going to look like? Go ahead, Fred. Here. Uh, I guess I totally agree with what Jonathan is saying, that what should be done to attract more students here. Mm -hmm. And I guess I've heard that same comment from Jonathan at this meeting the last two years. And what has happened? I don't see any kind of study, any kind of analysis, anything put forward to say how can we attract more this students. This is a finance committee meeting. Right. Well, Fred, I'm not I being know. critical when I say that. I'm just saying let's collectively figure out how to do that analysis. Okay, but it does affect the financing because if we get more students, then the financial picture is different. So maybe we, and maybe this is not the time to ask for that information here, but but to, to say within, you know, the next six months or whatever that, that we would like to see some kind of analysis like that being done or at least started or, or get something organized to look at that within six months or whatever. So we can look at it before the next budget cycle and decide do we need to change priorities to get more students <coughs> here or, or change the funding or wherever the funding goes if, if we can. Could you explain to me what that looks like? Because I'm the superintendent of four separate elementary schools, right. all with the same problems, all <laughs> fighting for the same kids. Okay, yeah. and so and so when you're asking for a study of what are you where are you looking to take students from to go off a of some go off another statement of <laughs> where are we gonna get those students from who are also so I understand the idea of putting a something inside your elementary school that that makes it a standout, makes it attractive for school choice. But we, you know, Whitley Elementary has excellent programming. It's an excellent school. So what? How do you market that? I understand the marketing side of that. That's marketing's a whole other job. <laughs> Private schools have several people that do marketing, recruiting, um, advertising, and they have a budget for that. So it is an idea. We could invest money into doing that kind of thing. Um, but that's a that's a much larger discussion. I think that you know again, mm -hmm. the school committee should. Um, also have a way in on that as well because that's a, there's a lot of different things that are are kind of being asked here. Well, and, okay. and so, yeah. <clears throat> and, but Darius, to answer your your point, I get your responsibilities for unique elementary schools. Mm -hmm. People in this room are frankly mostly concerned with one of those schools, and if and, and the goal is not to cannibalize from Conway, Deerfield, and Sunderland, mm -hmm. more than to, to A, take from other schools, but also attract people who hadn't even thought about this region. But I don't personally care whether we, I'm totally comfortable saying Waitley is a, has done so many creative things different from Deerfield, Conway, and Sunderland. Mm -hmm. I'm totally okay with that. And because that's what our budget is, that's what our priorities are. And then hopefully if we do do it right, then the other three schools respond and say, wow, maybe a little bit of investment in high-end students or in you know making finding out why students are leaving, why students are coming, those things, then they'll replicate it. But I, I think what you're hearing is we'll be the guinea pigs. At least I'll be the guinea pig. And so then other schools will say, all right, lesson learned. But I don't need to be the same as all the other schools. I, I want to be better than every school. And if that costs money, 
<coughs> Money well spent. Okay. Well, I, I just want to add two things. <coughs> That's okay. Go ahead. Um, one, I want to respond to Brian's question, which is my hope is that this year is a significant increase and then we can keep things more steady if we're able to maintain the school choice. The hard thing is there's a lot of ifs mm -hmm. in any of our budgets. I think what you're asking for, and I'm excited to try and put one together, is more of a long-term plan of what could we envision if we had more investment in the school and how would that work? Um, well, that's so what we. That's, I would love to yeah. think about that. More. That's the I mean, see, that's the ideal. That's for us, for people who are spending the money. That's the ideal. You want to know where this is going. Right. See, we right. want to see the vision and right. say, this is here's the vision. Right. How do we get there? If you take these tangential lines that are coming off, and this is these are the monies that are going in here, and the reason we want these monies here is so okay, that right. this vision. Right. can come to fruition right and and we always get kind of wrapped up in right well part of it is the day-to-day -day just absorbs everybody but I do yeah. think that we've also had a change in leadership that haven't had time to even sure. really put together a vision yep. so I think mm -hmm. this is great feedback for us to be thinking about we're just really focused on next year at this point given that this is the first oh I'm sorry Bob just a little thing we are talking about school choice and how many I think in this year we have 43 in and nine going out yes so I asked about the nine today two are kids they lived in Deerfield their new houses in Waitley so two out of the nine are staying put in Deerfield because because that's where the sure. that's where the kids have their friends and stuff so that brings us down to seven and I and I think there was one or two other ones so there's only five that maybe we haven't investigated why they went out <coughs> but if you look in your packet it'll tell you where we're getting them from right yeah. it's in your packet yeah. of those 43 yeah. so that tells you we're not taking a lot from conway deerfield or sunderland we're we are getting them from gil Montague. Yeah. Yeah. you know we are we are out there getting those people so it's but the conversations with the parents oh good information to have that quantitative that qualitative analysis would be really helpful the other the other thing I just want to make sure people are aware is that we did start a preschool program a few years ago with yep. some support from the Finance Committee and that is proving to be a good uh, um, theater I think into our yep. school and yep. that's some steps that we're taking to try and get the kids in early and keep them there because the preschool anybody can go to the preschool right. and that also generates some revenue that offsets some of our costs so um, those are the kinds of things that I think people want to come back and think about more that's a big plus. Yeah, it's been a really. We were looking at the numbers there today. Successful. What we pay out of that revolving fund, we do take care of a salary plus an IA salary out of that revolving fund. Right. And then how do we market that? I mean, I don't know. You guys might have the Madison. Depends what we have for open I, I don't know. You know, I I'm, I mean, this is going to be a conversation for another day because we can <laughs> yeah forever. But at the end of the day, I I'm a firm believer that the advertising and all of that marketing has to come from Frontier. And I see these schools as the feeder schools to Frontier. And the Frontier is the magnet where kids want to go and parents want their children to be uh, for secondary education. Um, these schools, being the feeder schools, are going to be very attractive or they're going to be more attractive. But I really think it stops uh, in front of you. But I don't want to kill that horse now. But um, any other comment? What else should we know about in regards to this budget? Because this is the first time we've seen it. And I know you've lived with it now for God knows how long. But um, what, what should we know? Um, I think a couple of other things that, again, on the cherry sheet, and this is on page four, and I think this is, this is telling of, I haven't done a long-term trend analysis, but certainly that's something that could happen. Um, when you look at the sending tuitions for both school choice and charters, you know, um, you see a decrease in what the town has to pay out to other entities. And um, the fact that there is projected uh, no student going off the charter is a good thing because the school gets charged, you get charged full tuition for a charter school student. 
public school choice is, you know, uh, pretty much a set amount plus any special mm -hmm. education costs on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, but charter school is the full tuition plus sometimes some special education costs as well. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's all one big happy pot the ins and outs as it works. So, you know, it, I mean, that if that's a continuing or a, a trend that seems to be continuing, you're keeping more people, which means you're keeping more of your revenue at home. So I think that's that's an important factor um, to note uh, in Very this important. process as Very well. Um, so uh, the school choice on page five, just so that you can see the school choice analysis, um, you know, we're looking at a net balance forward from June of um, 2018 of 192 259 um, The $230,000 coming in, that's the down tick from the 281 um, so that you've got an anticipated revenue and balance uh, in the forwarding balance of four, four, excuse me, 422, 652 and change. Um, but if you look at um, where the salaries, you know, are, we've made some shifts. Those numbers were much higher on the budgeted side and the anticipated revenue side. We've made some changes to be able to try and keep things a little bit lower. Um, so that coming out of FY20, you're going to come out with at least $38,000. It could be a little more. Um, as I've been looking at anticipated expenses to the end of this fiscal year, we may even be a little bit higher than that. But again, I wanted to project conservatively. I didn't want to project in the wrong direction. So um, that's why I went in that particular uh, direction with regard to uh, salaries and, and whatnot. So, that anticipated balance, if you notice, it's it's beginning to dwindle and dwindle significantly. So the, that funding clip is within sight. Look, can, I, can I add to that? So when you look at that ending school choice number, you know our auditor says you want to be at fifty thousand dollars based on just any student movement that you have. That you don't have fifty thousand dollars to cover. You could start the school year September first be in deficit and have to make cuts in the first day of school. To staffing or that you probably don't in a school this size you don't have a lot of leeway so understand that, that 38,000 that you're seeing there that is with a cut in this budget we're reducing a staff member okay and that and where Chris is going to have to find out how to provide those services that are needed um, with less in order to get that surplus and not be breaking even with the school choice with the school choice number so if you we lost some school choice families this year. The, all of them were because of moving. They moved to Southwick and they moved to somewhere else. It's not that they couldn't stay, the owner could stay here. But that was just, just a regular transition. That number could go up, we could grab more students in, but we have to, as you guys know, you have to budget conservatively. You have to budget what you know, not what you're hoping for. So it's just, it's important to know that we're making cuts in order to have a, make a surplus in choice, because you have to have a surplus in choice in order to have a healthy budget. And what happened was this, the, the way the budget was, was developed and went through last year, spending kind of a double hit, losing students and using too much choice brought us too close to that line. So we really want to get that number up to 50,000 for healthy. And, you know, that, that's so I want people to understand that. It's not when you look at it, like, look, well, yeah, $38,000 to spend there. You really want that to be a little bit higher. Because <clears throat> you lose three or four students, and if any of those have a special ed increment that's being added to the $5,000 in school choice, and you're in trouble. Right. So you do want a, a cushion in there for that purpose. Um, and then I think the only other thing is the last um, six pages or so of the packet is the actual budget. And I just wanted to explain to you about how TMS does budgeting. Um, we have a philosophy to be as transparent as we possibly can be um, in regard to budgets. Um, so this is starting on page eight. You'll see three columns. Two are in blue. One is in pink. The pink column is what we call an all-funds budget. So you actually see what the real cost of personnel is, and all of the columns to the right show the offsets that are done by various funds, whether it's choice or a reef grant or special education or early childhood revolving and whatnot. And um, particularly as you look on page uh, 9 and uh, on page 10, you'll see where those offsets in terms of salaries. So you'll notice that the salary for classroom teachers is much higher, and it's much higher for a couple of different reasons. Um, 
but you also notice that there is, you know, a $98,000, $99,000 offset in both choice and a, and a week grant um, offset in there. So that there is, you know, funds that are applied, but the real cost of those salaries is two hundred eighty some one thousand dollars The town side of that is three six. Sorry, I can't read my own stuff. It's the three eighty six nine sixty five. So for your purposes, you want to be comparing the blue to the blue columns because they are both local budgets. But we feel it's important that you see the full picture as well. So that's what that middle, what we call all funds budget is about. So after reviewing all programs and services for 2020, is there any program or service that you feel may not be making the grade that we may be falling short on and providing students' needs? Um, you feel comfortable that all the programs, all the services are competitive, adequate, providing the students' needs that they should? I'm concerned about the the, the counselor down to half time. Um, Why? She's, she's busy all day long. Um, there are certain students who have counseling in their in their IEP. Um, so it's likely that next year those will be the only students that she'll be able to spend time with. And we have students who don't have those services on an IEP or in a 504 that still need help. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not a secret that there's a serious uptick in kids who experience anxiety for a variety of reasons, and we see a lot of that. And a lot of our choice kids come to us because we're a small setting where they can get extra attention. And so we end up with some, some students who need that service and they maybe don't have an IEP for it, but the parents sought us out because of the small setting. What's the number that was cut from that half time? You know? Yeah. It's uh, 37,000. Is that just salary or is that all in? Um, just just well, you guys do the benefits. We so do yeah, don't actually have the benefits. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What's the hour? What's the? It's 0. 0.5. Out of position. 40 hours? I don't think we have yeah. hours. It's, it's contractual services, so it's, uh, it's by a collective bargaining agreement. So it's a salary position. It's not an hourly position. But benefited. Yes. Yeah. Regardless of hours. Um, it would depend on the hours. So do so do we know what the hours would be? So so the question is is it going to remain a benefited position? I guess is my question. Yeah, the workday for teachers is what it's said. That was a question that we needed to look into is what would happen to the benefits. Okay. I don't think we've researched that fully. Mm -hmm. And obviously we don't want to have to cut the benefits if we don't have to. All cuts are a, a tough decision to make, but that's, yeah. that's hard to right. what in some respect. But that's the value proposition right there. Right. That's the well, here's the number, but it's not the number we want. See, the number we want is this. And the reason we want this is because I've got 40 kids that need to see a counselor twice a week. And if they don't, they're gonna go back to that classroom. And it's gonna be hell. So all of your kids who are in there, who are trying to learn, are gonna be disrupted for three hours a day because these kids are off the wall. So go ahead. Give me this low number. It's up to you, but you're the one huh. in the in in the in the reverse. <laughs> you're the one who's making the decision. Well, can I come back to you with a different but number? That's, see, that's, <laughs> but that's the value. Yeah. Okay. Or the risk. Or the risk. Or the risk. Right? Or the risk. Bob, I just want to say one more thing. That's it. Go ahead. All these years we've been coming in here. This is a new two. We've been coming in here all these years, keeping it under two and a half right. for up teen years. School choice, 12, 13 years ago, everything we bought with school choice money was for the kids 
computers, this and that. See what we're paying now? We're paying 300,000 or 200 and something thousand in salaries because we kept it under two and a half percent all those years. All those years. We didn't want a three or four or five percent budget. So we just socked it right on the school choice and that's what's happening. We try to take a little bit out of there to put it back into the budget. Yeah. We're back up to 3.9. We could be at 5.86. Originally, you couldn't use school of choice money to offset anything, anything in the budget. Things <coughs> well, when it first came through. Right? I mean, I think that's still we would love to come back to you with a budget that has mm -hmm. that position. But I don't know. We, the timing is something that gets a little tricky. Well, that's the other thing with that. I, year, I, I that I think when we've got all three boards here, yeah. you get the select board, you get the finance committee, you get the schools. We got to come to some kumbaya here, folks. Yes, sir. On the timing, either either we got to push uh, the town, town meeting back. off <laughs> back, push it back, or you got to get together on the calendars so that you know finance committee can look at this. And it takes us time to pull all the Oh, I'm sure it does. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that. Right. But Some of it's dictated by what number you get from the state. And you know, we, right. we still won't have the numbers from the right. state. Right. But somehow, I think we've got to become more realistic in the ability of a finance committee to take a look at a budget and make a recommendation to a town one way or right. another. Right. And, and this, is, this is a tough road. This is a tough way to go. Do other schools have one FTE for psycholo psycho psychologist and consultant, or are we unique? Council. I'm sorry, council. The, the school that's easiest to make the comparison is Conway, and they have a full-time. And okay. forgive me, what's the responsibility difference between this person when she's doing psych? The, the, when she's acting as a school psychologist as opposed to acting as a school counselor? Um, sometimes it's that she's um, performing educational psychological testing so that we determine um, special education needs. If we don't have someone who can do that in-house, we need to contract out for that service. It has to be a psychologist. And then when she's serving as a counselor, what's she doing? just kids variety of things yeah. and I think Chrissy's point about the anxiety of kids these days is a really important one that we need to keep in mind as we're trying to provide the best educational learning for them because there is a lot of anxiety and if this helps to offset that that increases their ability to learn more and helps the teachers be able to have a classroom where they can actually move forward with them. so what should we do? Well, in conclusion, I, I, you know, I mean, students' needs need to be met. What's the yeah, period? What's what's the dollar increase in version two? Thirty-seven. Well, thirty-seven, whatever. Give me, give me a second here, that and one, I will the, make the one, a the one position was thirty-seven. The, the half position, right? right? Yep. I mean, the way it works is you're giving us feedback, and then we come back to you with the final budget. Yeah. Eventually. If the, and if you if want the me to build the Cadillac, that, yeah. If you want me to build the Cadillac, <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you got to be careful. Uh, I, we don't I, have the have a Buick. We have to I want you to build them. it only so we can argue. Yeah, like yeah that's way over. No, no, I mean, I'm just saying. You guys say that was I don't want to have a Cadillac. Yeah. Definitely keep that in mind for next year. Yeah. What do you think, Paul? Well, um, gentlemen, um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, um, folks, um, what do you think of? I mean, how how we normally do this, but you know, timing is is that we listen to all the budgets. Okay, so we get all the budgets, and we take a look, and then we look at the numbers, and then we go to Brian, and we say, okay. <laughs> What's it going to do to the taxes? Make this work. <laughs> and, and then he comes up, he goes, no, yep. good or mm, not so mm. good. You know, and then, and then we will adjust our recommendation um, to, to the town based on all of that. But right now, right here, right now, 
I mean, I, I can't tell you your jobs. I, I mean, it's just, it's our responsibility just to look at basically the numbers and the value that we're getting. And um, if, um, if you're telling us that for $37,000 more, we're gonna have a better school, a more effective learning environment, and uh, a more successful outcome for the children of this town. <coughs> we go for it. Well, but then you have to decide at that point whether it comes up or comes down. But you need a proposal. But you need a proposal. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. I hear you. So that's that's where we're at. <laughs> and, and, you know, I don't I expect you to. Do you understand what we're saying? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Great. So we have a public hearing on the budget on Monday. Mm -hmm. And we are able to change the budget at that public hearing to reflect what we want to well, see moving forward. Right. You have enough time in your timeline, because you're not, yes. I mean, it's my first time through this too, so I look for a little advice here. But you guys dictate your own when you have to have your budgets in them as a town. I mean, for town meeting, you have to have, is it two weeks out that you have to have everything finalized? Yeah, everything's got to be finalized. And, right. that kind of and it's got to be balanced so, against all the other requests, obviously. Right, exactly. Right. But I'm just saying in the sense that we will know, we can, we will have right. a well, budget no, voted because it's already been publicized, because that's one thing we have to do by law, um, is to have the, the formal hearing on the budget. So we will create a budget and send it off to you, and then we can have another discussion. Um, you know, it's, it's different than what we're going to talk about in a minute, it's Frontier. But, um, but that's, you know, we can, this is a budget that, again, was, we had a meeting this morning where we went back and forth, we had two numbers, um, there was much debate on <laughs> which number should be brought forward, and it was, it was said that we should, we brought, this where we, number, we brought the smaller the two numbers forward. The Toyota. For okay. me, what would be helpful is to actually have, in writing, the, the, the quantifiable the job of what she's yeah. doing in terms of number of students that have been met over the past year, two years, whatever it is, so that then we can say, oh, but whatever hour per hour work week, she's meeting with X number of students. At, if you cut those hours in half, she's suddenly meeting with Y number of students, and is, are we going to or not going to meet the demand? Yeah. If we're going but to that's a, we can't can't boil it down to one position. But you can, but you can have history. You can have a history of right. We can provide a narrative on the value that's added. We can try and provide some numbers. But I'd be worried about success. being too specific about one job. I mean, the school has multiple people providing services. But this one person deals with counseling and psychological needs for IEP kids. But. For well, all students. I'm saying that if, if her students. position is cut, then it won't first have to deal with compliance and IEPs. Right. And so that might be all she gets to. And so she won't be doing much do guidance. That, She'll be yeah. doing if a lot of do IEP that, stuff. Then you're going to have parents driving IEPs. Yeah. Right. Which is more. Right. Fun. Okay. Okay. So that's so right. we're probably we don't want to we're probably a, better off with having you know just the uh, the random. The randomness of that, or her services are spent provided to all the students, so right. this portion goes to every student now, which won't yeah. happen in the future. Correct. Have to cut it. So, <coughs> if, if we're gonna, if you know, we are somewhat um, aggressive in, in bringing in school choice kids, and if we're going to continue to do that, um, I think we have to realize that you take all comers, and with that. You get issues, and issues have to be dealt with in order to keep the entire population um, somewhat stable. Um, I, think, I, think. I, I think, you know, one of the things that would be great about Wheatley Elementary School is if we accept students with whatever issues they have and support them to be successful. Have people or programs in place to encourage, not a I don't know if you want to say encourage them to come, but you can deal with them if they come. And their towns pay for it. Yeah, that's we right. don't pay. The other, no, the other towns. Like no, we don't pay for no, the other towns. The towns where they come from pay for the. Yeah, but you got to have the people in place for right that yeah, child or whatever to come. And, and, and that's sort of my point. We want to be the go-to school that's for right. the people with most in need and the go-to school with the people who are in south. 
that's what makes which it a need. Which, which is huge. And you don't attract new people by cut. No. No, that's exactly. Okay, well, we okay. really appreciate right. the discussion. We will come back my day around. And we will try and get to you earlier next year with a longer term plan. Oh, yeah, we'll yeah. have a calendar next year. <laughs> First for everything, Bob. Thank you. All right. Thank you. See? Thank you. <laughs> Wish you would have told me that 12 years ago. <laughs> no, see, 12, 12 years ago, there was a big difference a between two and a half all those years. I never said that. There's to you, a Bob. big difference between what was going on 12 years ago and what's going on now. Absolutely, quite a difference. Quite a difference. Life has changed. Okay, let's let's uh, let's jump right into Frontier Regional High School. Um, and um, so, I mean, where Frontier is at is that the. Um, you know Frontiers meeting on Thursday night to present the budget for the first time to the Frontier School Committee. So, I'll, I will be there, and I think others will right. be there. So we're at Conway. Oh, you're at Conway. We're at Conway because Conway has a school committee meeting that night, and then we had a staff meeting in order to get people to the same place. So we decided to just go there. Okay. Five fifteen. Five fifteen in Conway. All right. And yeah. the only thing on the budget, only thing on the agenda is the budget. So okay. There is a budget ready to be moved forward there. So it's not going to get there. It's a good So then there's really nothing to discuss here on the front frontier. We thank you for uh, thank you. Done, done a lot of work on this. This is the first fin comment I've ever been to. <laughs> <laughs> sad this is and I've been in this business for over 40 years. This is, this is an easy oh. one. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. we're the best. Oh, so, <laughs> this is a pleasure. <laughs> Public comment was at the beginning. I'm sorry. Oh, it's about the weekly budget. Oh yes. So we found out this morning that the sprinkler bids came in. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Never mind. So I shouldn't open my mouth. No. No. Right. Zip it. It's on our agenda. <laughs> it's all set. Okay. Maybe. All well, set, well, Bob. Set. Don't get no. nervous, Bob. See, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stick around for a while. <laughs> yeah. What are other schools? No, I just, like, I just thought. I was just asking about the pause. Pause. That's right. Wonderful. Oh, hey, Darius. One second. Darius. Let me to put you on the spot. Do we have any questions about the Frontier Capital Plan? Not yet, but they will. Okay. Well. I mean, or we can we can put together our own questions and send them out. Send them yeah, out to you. Sure. I don't really. Have, I mean, we have questions. How's the you know the whole track thing? Is that is that? I mean, I think we found a way to to fund that in our portion of it. Yeah. Is everybody coming through on that thing? Yes. What do you mean by that? The, uh, the other towns. Embracing? Embracing that. <laughs> I'm working kind of at the beginning of, they've, I've sent it out to everybody and asked for comments, and you guys were obviously there that night, but there were actually was comments and feedback, and we yeah. made adjustments to that, and to make, in the sense of making sure it was dead exclusive, the would be dead excluded from the, um, the towns itself, and so that was kind of the biggest change, we kind of shifted small projects and just put only the big projects within the, um, we're going to go into debt for, and um, you know, doing, you know, that's kind of the idea and taking getting the loans as we do the project not just taking the money and sitting on it but go there and, and look for the savings there so that's kind of you know where we're at with that so um, you know if you have questions regarding within it you know, shoot me a note and then I can also and if I can't answer it I'll I'll get the answers so all right all right thank you yep. thanks <coughs> okay so do you think that's right that those towns are paying out no, I don't think it is either. I, no, I look, I look, look I think at the that's numbers. crappy. There's only three kids from Deerfield coming here. Nobody from Conway, nobody from Sunderland. And there's none of our kids are going to those schools. So what's your point? Within the well, it's gonna end, it's, school policy. choice is gonna end one of these days. It's gonna end, it's gonna, there's not gonna be enough kids no matter what, so schools are gonna have to and it's the whole county, it's not just yeah. here. This, right. this district's pretty strong, but what's happened at Pioneer is gonna happen at Mohawk, and it's probably gonna happen at Maher. And I don't know that maybe even Turner's, and I don't know where it's gonna end up. I, I think, our, I mean, locally, our school choice, this, this. It's not, this school, can, this school, count, this, but this eventually, cash count eventually in some places, are, it's, gonna, it's gonna have to change, and I don't know. Yeah what the impact will be. They should come to us with a budget without school choice. 
what the school would look like without school choice. Uh, uh, I think you can project, project well, you can, you can project almost project predict what it's yeah, going to be. Just add 200, just 200 and something thousand. Okay, we're going to go back to the yeah. one million yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying it's, it's um, um, just Our school early. choice problem might be a little closer than we think. We just put in 40 new houses, right? But there's 40 new residents, and our school's not going to have the empty slots for school choice kids. Yeah. And like five years from now, we won't have as many Mm -hmm. So I think this is really um, an important thing. I, I think this is just maybe the, the tail end of that kind of kind of starting. I mean, it um, cycles. It, it uh -huh. cycles, but that's I think that's something we really have to uh, be thoughtful about. Yeah. Um, and our chair, like we, our cherry sheet numbers go up and our school choice numbers go, uh, you know. And yeah, but the, it, it's not a it's not a balance. Right. Uh, at one point, we were getting more money for a school choice child than we got from the state for a Whateley child. Yeah, I don't know if that's, that's still the case. I don't believe that's the case. I think it might be closer, but uh, it's not all that different. Right? So that's yeah, to me that's the scarier big picture with this school choice. Even in the I don't know five years is a really long term, but medium term. Yeah. 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 Okay, Brian, do you? We'll just keep going down the list. Yeah, we'll down the list. Public health. Okay, right here. public health. Yeah. We warmed up some seats for you. <laughs> no, we pushed on it. Rand, how you doing? Good, how are you doing? Great. 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 So, just want, um, we want to take these in order. That's the order that they're in their packet, so. Am I presenting or are you guys questions? Order out. Okay, if you have it in front of you, here's the request. Yeah, we do. Give, give, us, the, uh, give, give us the highlights. Order out. Highlights are uh, level fun. <laughs> Double points. So that should be pretty straightforward. So what, if I could just interject for one second. The you see in the right hand corner there's zero percent here. Yeah. So that does that reflects uh, a zero percent cola because it hasn't been voted on by the uh plus enough yet. Right. Oh it should happen at its next meeting. So Okay. Um yeah, I can this will be adjusted as we right. move forward. Okay. Okay. The health agents, Foothills Health District, that's our Foothills District we belong to. And we share the cost of the health agents with three other towns. Uh, it's increased largely to the request is 18,154 73. Most of that cost is retired Hampshire County retired. Could you say that again? Most of that increase. Can you speak up? Because it's also hard for the camera to catch. Most of the increase there is the Hampshire County retirement, which is what we're part of. Okay. It's uh, about twelve hundred bucks. Solid waste. Solid waste. Always a dilemma. Anyway, we have uh, requested forty-six thousand ninety-two dollars, ninety-seven dollars, and that's uh, due. In that increase from last year's request is largely the amount of increased tip fees for trash. Went up ten bucks. Last year we're seeing, which is, I mean, that's minuscule. <clears throat> this is going to become a huge yeah. problem. We're on the edge of a cliff. Yeah, with a lot of this stuff. Where's this stuff going to go? Like you're burning. Like okay. Where? <laughs> Find new. That's what we used to do. Oh. Barrel object. Yeah, I we mean, not that. But uh, we don't get out. <laughs> you know, it's going to, there's nobody around here taking it. It's going to Seneca Falls, New York. It's going to Morristown, New York. 
going up to the Canadian border somewhere around the state. When they start saying no, we'd be in big trouble if they start saying no. Yeah. Well, that's what they want to do. Well, they not just our dilemma, it's the whole. Yeah, so I know I asked you this last year how much of an impact will be. How much of an impact will it be next year? Uh, I can't predict, but I think that right now that uh, option for disposal is still open for our, at least another year, two, maybe two, three. So, so this number could be well over 50 next year. Mm, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, well, there's also a table, but not reflected here. The uh, MRF, where we take our recyclables, is up for a new contract, a 10-year contract, which is not going to be as favorable as the past decade. Obviously, we may actually have to pay to get rid of stuff. Recyclables. I mean, we're still going to get paid per ton, some small amount, but it's going to be balanced by... Trucking. Okay. Yeah, trucking. Trucking costs went up a little bit, as you can see. But most of the increase is different. And I do expect that to rise in the future. <coughs> but so far, so good this year. I mean, it's okay. not bad. We got something else? Or has it? <coughs> yeah, it has a voice to it. Yeah, I don't have that. So that's, so that's. It's somewhat out of my control, this. It's our control. We uh, offer this hazardous waste option as um, once a year for people who have you know, piles of toxic stuff. Right. And it uh, costs a lot of money. The district runs the program up in out of Greenfield Community College. Mm -hmm. We just pay whatever, how many people show up with what. So from Wheatley. So Wheatley, we've been budgeting $1,000 at this time. People showed up a little bit more and got rid of more stuff. It's good. It's good. Okay. That explains that increase. And uh, the Solid Waste Management District is um, the last item here. Again, I'm not on the board there, but we were a member of the district and they provide a lot of services and help to us. They changed the assessment. I don't know what the increase was. $60. Yeah. $60. So, yeah. It's not much. They are um, dealing with having to move a lot. They've been forever on Miles Street, and that's going to be sold, so I don't know what's going to happen. That's it. Okay. So, are the fees collected from year to year pretty constant, pretty steady? Oh, for us? Yeah. At, at the transfer station? Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we collected about $30,000. Income. That doesn't count. That doesn't count all of the grants we get. So we get on top of that, we get about five thousand from the RDP, it's a rural development fund or something. We get that, and we get some money from the MRF. We get a percent of the tonnage that we bring down there. So, so we're out of that saying that we're covering all the costs, but we're pretty close. You see any increase coming down the road for the bags? <laughs> I just ordered it. Um, so um, we probably could go up. I mean, especially if things change in the, the numbers here. We've had a uh, $2 price per bag for a long time. We have to be careful because we don't want to scare people off of our system. But $3 might be a reasonable. Burnt trash in your barrels. What? Is it the burnt, burnt trash in your barrels? Yeah. Or worse. Or worse. Any uh, questions? Uh, Fran, while he's here, checking his budget. No. Select board, good on. Good with that, Fran. Okay, Fran. Okay. Thank you very much for mm -hmm. coming in and uh, going through it. Hope it works. Who's up? Oh my goodness. Back to the senior crime.
Hello, everybody. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? Had some wind out there, huh? Okay. Oh, mm. Keep us busy. Job security. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Keep. Right. Uh, I'll start with my, everybody on your sheet with the uh, highway salaries. Gotcha. I'll start on that section. Um, one thing that's happened there is due to um, employee leaving and us hiring a new employee, there's a reduction of $906, which amounts to the difference. Um, after you work three years, you move up a little bit from the base pay, so that's the difference right there. That's a reduction. Nothing else changed there until we get the information that will be plugged in if and when there's a cola. Um, on to, does anybody else have a question about that? No. All right, on to the highway general expenses. Yep. Changes there, um, equipment rental, Increased four hundred dollars. Um, other changes: catch basin cleaning. Um, continue to try to reduce that um, that line a little bit each year as we're gaining on not having as much um, cleaning to do as a result of not having the sand out there. Um, Blacktop or bituminous concrete, um, that's gone up. I've increased that $1,000. Um, in 2018, I spent um, right around 89, almost $9,000. Um, it's one of those things where, like right now, if I was to have to buy blacktop, it would be a lot cheaper because the asphalt index has gone down tremendously. But seems to be every time we do our bidding in in March April when the bid prices come in and then by the time we go to buy asphalt in June July August September the, the asphalt prices have shot up and one of the things that we have to pay nowadays is our escalation costs so that when the prices are bid if the asphalt prices have gone up contractor that we're buying it from can charge us more than what the bid originally was. a good deal. That is a good deal for them it is. But at the same point in time, if and it has happened once in a while, there's a de-escalation charge. But that's usually very seldom that we ever have that happen. But um, so that's the change there. Um, culverts and bridges bump that up just uh, a little bit to $3,500 um, on signs. Um, I continue to um, reduce my sign budget. If you look way back, we were up to um, $4,000. At over $4,000, we were spending trying to get the town into compliance with our signs. And now we are getting much closer so we're able to reduce that for a net change of $600 increase to the <coughs> highway section, high general highways. On to the next page, Link the roads. There again, the, um, the only change there is the minus 481 was the fact that the same thing with the highway salaries that we have a new employees so that that price went down. <clears throat> On to the materials. Um, the ex amount expended in 2018 on the salt was $42,000. Um, we budgeted 37 this year and for next year I'm asking for 38. Um, <clears throat> that is one thing that can be all over the place as it stands right now unless something totally unforeseen happens we uh, you know I should have no problem 
making it through with the uh, budget because we're doing much better than we were last year as far as materials go. Um, sand, uh, I increased it moderate, or moderately um, due to increase in price per ton, not really, not not affecting the volume, it's just how much the price per ton has gone up. Um, then what I did uh, with the plow blade shoes and hardware, if you notice, um, I know we, we had talked last year, some of these things, and this is the way the budget's been for forever, is there's really, the way I look at it, there's no reason why we need to separate yeah. nuts and bolts from plows. You know, it's, it's that, so I combine that together. Um, so yeah. one, one went up, one went up, and then I went way down, I, I eliminated. So in the years to come, it'll all just, you know, we'll just consolidate all that. And then the, the liquid, the icing remains the same level funded there. Keith, didn't we just approve a, uh, was it an increase in winter roads or, or was that the chapter 90 money we got from winter roads? Chapter 90 has nothing to do You don't get money. chapter 90 no, money. No, okay, well, what, Brian, did, didn't we just approve an increase or got money for winter roads? No, we had additional money added to additional. chapter 90 based on the government's, uh, the governor's that was budget. budget. Oh, okay. That, that has I, nothing I to do with this budget at all. I thought it was with winter roads, but yeah, maybe not. Just, okay. just regular chapter 90 funds. Uh, okay. On to road machinery. Um, same type of thing there. Um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to consolidate things. There's really, um, in fact, um, there's really not any changes there other than just reconfiguring the numbers again I don't think we need to know um, the breakdown how much engine oil I buy it's all, <coughs> it's all going towards the vehicle maintenance um, same thing we did many years ago with antifreeze that again these are this is a the remnants of the, how the budget was done many many years ago and I, and yeah. I don't think we really need to know that well, so they they use four gallons of antifreeze? Right, yeah. so it's, yeah. I'm just trying to consolidate. Yeah. 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 Spark plugs? No. Yeah. No. Uh, how much does a truck tire cost? 250, 300 bucks. That's on the cheap side. Well, not, you're not going to get a radio for that. Um, <laughs> anywhere, well, like for instance, my. Um, Capital request this year for was one of the things was for loader tire and they're two thousand a piece. Um, so that's the high end of something all the way down to you know, two hundred dollars. You know, for a pickup truck, you're going to spend. Yeah, that's why I asked about the truck tire list. By the time you go to a, to one of our regular bigger trucks, you're looking at for a steering tire about six sixty six hundred because you can't use recaps or anything like that. But your rears, you can drive tires can put on recaps and save a little bit of money. Really? Yeah, we do that That's, we can. And then again, the other thing that dictates it is um, how well, how good the casing is and how old it is. In many cases, um, our tires on our vehicles, because they are older, we're not putting a lot of miles on so we don't wear the tread down. So by the time we need to replace them, our casings aren't good enough. We have to either try to go buy a used casing or have to buy a new tire. So. Okay. On to garage maintenance. Um, increased my electricity um, just a little bit. Same thing with the um, phone. Just there's charges you know the cost seems to keep going up um, heating oil did the same thing there added a little bit and then the big change was um, added five hundred dollars for training and physicals and to be quite honest I'm not even sure if that's enough at this point in time 
um, but it's a starting point as you as some of you may be well aware that we are now obligated to, to meet with meet OSHA standards and, and in fact we're having to do um, catch up in regards to how, how much training we've done um, some of the training that we're attempting to do is through our own insurance company, through Maya. Maya will su um, supply us with uh, free, free training, but some of the other things that we participate in, for instance, Bay State Roads, and their cost, by the time you go, you send an employee, it's um, $75 per person, so four of us need to go to a one-day class, we're looking at um, $300. So we have per, per, is that per person? Yeah. No, the seventy-five dollars per person <laughs> for a day class. Okay. Of course, that include there. Yeah. There's a lunch included with those costs usually. Um, so that's the way it is. But um, is it a good lunch? Sometimes. Okay. And what, when we can, we try to hold training off of, hold trainings here so we get. When we have yeah, done it here, the, the policy they have when they come here is they give us um, two free. So we're in a sense, say, if all four of us came, it would save us $150 okay. by having it here, by offering up this room. And we've done that for good. three times maybe in the last year, year and a half. Do you think the 1200 will be adequate? or I, I, It's a starting point. I I just don't know. <coughs> I, I mean, for it. We're but something whether we, we are now no. I'd rather just let leave it at that. If I find we need something, then I'll look. We can move it. Okay, yeah. Okay. No, it's not a move. Um, down, down. It's street. something that I don't even. You know, Brian. We, Brian, we don't even really have a handle on yet. Right. It's just. Okay. We're starting the uh, quarterly meetings with our uh, risk manager from Maya to help us through this process as you catch up process which most towns in Massachusetts are going through right now so um, to be continued I guess but it's good to have a little money in there to start I think sure that makes sense okay and then on to the, the tree, tree department um, what you got going any changes there oh um, yeah everything's flat okay good Sound sounds good. No surprises. Why do you have a, well, I know you probably didn't say you have tree account because you had it for the last 25 years. I think it makes sense to put that just under highway general expenses? Well, no, I don't think so because the tree warden is a separate, separate department. Separate department, oh, okay. Tree warden is not necessarily the highway superintendent. Well, it is now. It happened. It it happened. Yeah. Used to be a uh, appointed position. It still is. Who's the tree warden now? I am. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that it's it's two separate positions. The tree warden, the highway superintendent, is not the tree warden per se. Yeah. It's two, it's, yeah. Yeah. Right now he is. <laughs> Yes, he changed change hats before he does one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He could retire I, until I get, retrieve I, 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 I accept okay. the appointment to two positions. Okay. I just tried and to so what I'm saying is that if, if there was a time where I was not the tree warden, then the yeah, tree warden would have to have his or her budget. Okay. So that's why I would. Glad you cleared that up. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay. Very good. Thanks. All right. What it, um, so I told Wayne 6.30. I was guessing where to have a schedule. Oh All right, well, let's do the reserve fund minutes. transfer. Okay, that's Good a good those. idea. Let's go. I got to find out where they are. I got them. I know why Bob's hanging around. So right. why they up this way yeah. here? He wants to hear what's in it. Yeah. He wants to tell us about the sprinklers. Sprinkler. Why they came in over budget or over yeah. request? 
<laughs> Go ahead. You know, you I know you guys straightened it out today, but you know, whatever whatever the number was, someone came back to us and said, "Well, you guys can pay for the difference out of your budget." It's all the same money. Exactly. I mean, it's, <laughs> when I heard that, we're trying to come in with a low budget. Yep. The other the other thing mm -hmm. is that it's got to get done. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, oh my God! It's got to be four get, years. This, this has been going years? on for forever. Just the number of hours we talk Wayne's about early. sprinkler heads. Wayne's early. Wayne, you on. got five yeah. minutes, Wayne. We're busy. Well, let's. <laughs> 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 Is there a planning board meeting tonight? Yeah. Seven o'clock. Oh, seven. It might be. Uh, so there's a lady out here about six thirty. Oh, um, she's posted it at uh, seven on the website. I think. Six thirty or seven. Okay. Um, so we got the bits for the sprinkler system to replace all the dry sprinkler pendant heads um, that failed the NFDA testing about a year and a half ago. <laughs> um, and it's been quite a frustrating process, but uh, we have a bid. It's the company who usually does the work on the system, so they're familiar with it. Um, but it's just under $3,000 short. Um, so we have options we could, um, and what I hope we could do is we could move this money from the reserve fund yep. into the account, or we could uh, present an article at a special town meeting if the select board were so inclined to call a special the, town meeting. We got the money in the reserve fund, let's get it out of there, it's clean. Just, yeah. So this was the only day we received? Uh, yep. A motion. Well, I think we should make a motion. Yep. Uh, do we have I make a motion we take the $3,000 out of the reserve fund for the sprinkler system. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Done. Select board, do you take a motion? Nope. We don't get to vote on that. Just the finance. But, this is but I went, ugh, so it would sound like it was. Oh. This is the <laughs> finance committee. You know, that was sweet calls. This is there. This is there. <coughs> What's the time frame to do it? Um, they, well, I think the idea is that they'll do the measuring um, in the ordering of the sprinkle heads um, over what break do we have next? April. April, April break. Yeah. And then they'll probably. Whenever the parts come in, I think it would be by the summer. I think that's the most opportune time. Um, do you have something coming around that we need to sign? Yep. That'd be good. That'd be good. Yeah. yeah, April vacation, or better known to us, spring break, as the Aruba assault. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 Me? Anyway, I don't know about you. I heard Venezuela is no longer uh, uh, sending stuff no. to uh, Aruba. That's fine. So there's a second one there that's attached, and that is um, fifteen hundred for fifteen hundred dollars. If if we're going to insure the center school building in its current in its current uh, state, yeah. then we need to move it to a uh, vacant building policy, and that would be the cost to do it for the rest of the fiscal year till June thirtieth, and that'll give us some time, hopefully, to figure out. Um, the future that building holds and that will I think help us figure out how to what, best insure it what will that we're not sure um, depending on how we, we want to move we, forward we've had some discussions okay. and you'll find it completely um, hard hard to imagine that the three of the selectmen don't all agree on what's the right thing to do um, <laughs> something new <laughs> happens every day <laughs> so that will at least protect our assets through well, that came out through could have been. July. <laughs> Hopefully, they don't cut the tape on that. Um, yeah, protect uh, the building um, through, through July 1st. To make a motion, we uh, transfer it on the 15th. Who's heating it? We are. Do I have a second? Yeah. I'll Thanks. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great idea. Okay, that's Things also happen. the only two, Things right? Happen. Um, yeah, was it going to? Okay, so Wayne, the it. last one, and um, yeah, Wayne, Enterprise Fund, a minute early. How was practice? Good. All right. Make those kids wrong like you talked about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't learn very well. How many forgot to send this up? Who didn't sign the second? Somebody didn't sign the second. All those two together? I mean, yep. yeah. Oh, wake up. Got it. <laughs> I 
as long as four you sign in. Send that back to one. Okay, let's uh, we've got the water department enterprise fund. Wayne, thanks for coming in. Give us the uh, give us the good news. Um, and give, 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 give us the highs and the lows, give us the changes, and uh, that'll, that'll, that'll be All right. that'll be most of the stuff stayed the same. Most went down a little bit went up. The dues and meetings stayed the same. The office supplies stayed the same. The advertising stayed the same. The electricity stayed the same. <coughs> the phone went up a little bit because we got to get cable down in the pump house now. So I imagine, I don't know what the bill is going to be for that. The, what's the next one? The testing and chemicals went up a little bit because there's a few extra tests we got to do this year that we didn't do last year. The maintenance and the parts went up a little bit because the Westbrook booster station needs some stuff done to it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> the where am I now? truck maintenance stayed the same. The engineering dropped a lot because we're actually anticipating any engineering that needs to get done, but I might need some for the Westbrook booster station, so I kept a little in there. Uh, building issues is nothing again. Uh, the debt service is the same, and it should be the last year yeah, for that. Yeah, the last year That's for that. great news. Mm -hmm. The monitoring of the flowers and the turtles and stuff, there's no payments for that this year, but next year there will be. And then the biggest jump was the debt service for the manganese loan, which we still don't know the number, but the 22,000 would be as if we use the whole thing, the whole loan. Mm -hmm. When do you think that's gonna be wrapped up? If they wanna start, he said sometime in April. So they have 180 days to do it from, 160 days. 180. 180 days from January? Yeah, and we signed that. So we have a signed contract for, with the company who's gonna do it. So it's just a matter of, um, going to the ground thoughts. Getting into the ground, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and you think that'll be the end of that? <laughs> the magazines? Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> Until the next change in the state changes, especially. When we did the pilot study with it, their their testing equipment had a hard time picking any manganese in it in the water. So it almost completely took everything out. And the water's gonna taste different. Yeah, that's the one drawback. It will taste different. How different will it taste? Manganese and iron actually give taste the water. Yeah. So if we take it all out, you're going to lose taste. Taste more chlorine then? You shouldn't, because we're not going to add no more chlorine than we do. We're still going to keep the chlorine at the minimum, <coughs> the least amount we can add to it. We have to put flavor in it. Yeah, we have to add a flavor to it. Let them drink tea. <laughs> By the season. Yeah, yeah, change it by season. There. <laughs> Maybe like a pumpkin spice in the fall. <laughs> I got on town water, so. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just looking out for everybody else. <laughs> okay. And then um, the water department overhead costs, those, those will fluctuate based on the overall budget for those line items to the end, this charges to the enterprise fund. That's the last page there, but we don't know what those are yet. And the other thing that might, I guess if we're going that far, the other thing that might change is the anticipated revenue. Which should go up. It should be, I did it as this, but it all depends what's gonna happen in the center of town. Right. Whether that number is gonna change or not. Right. Yeah. Is this assuming those people or not assuming? No, not assuming. So it will go up. Yeah. It's a good way for revenue to go. It'll go up, but all your other expenses are going to go up. Too. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So you're probably going to that number will go up, but the other one will also go up. So they'll probably 
you've been out about where they are. Yeah. yeah. Then when the next rate change comes in, it'll all go up. Right. <laughs> Just the, the only, the initial expense of tying the two systems together is mm -hmm. going to have to be dealt with. Yeah. 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 We're supposed to yeah. run it's another pump, pump too. Yeah, I'm running another pump. Maintenance will go higher. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Every cost of electricity and everything else goes higher. So the rate change didn't happen before they hooked up. Yeah, practical sense. They've already had. Yeah, we're looking at because what's. What's actually going to be in that booster station is the actually the same pumps that are in Westbrook. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have a pretty good idea of what. I mean, there's more houses, so they're going to run longer. But it's basically the same setup. Kind of, yeah. Same pump. Yeah. For the domestic side of the water, yeah. Yeah. Anyone have any further questions or anything you'd like to ask? Wayne, while he's here. Uh, you got a request for a new pickup. Yeah. But the enterprise fund is going to pay for it. That's money that you've already got set aside. Okay. And a little bit additional, right, from them? Yeah, depending on the extra that's going to come out of the, right. what's it called? The, uh, retained earnings. Retained earnings. Retained earnings. <laughs> okay. And where's the 12000 that the highway department for that? Somebody's going to give you for the for your current one. That's going to be goes into the enterprise fund. <coughs> okay. I don't know what we're talking about that. How are we going to do that with? I, I think it's cleaner if that goes into the enterprise fund and you at the same time you appropriate twelve thousand. That's so like we're saying twelve thousand disappears for right. take we everything out and then that pay for it and then the back. twelve thousand goes into the enterprise fund. And Why then you want, you're going to start <laughs> accumulating. So much money for a new, another new truck, yeah. which is what we're going to The highway department will take over the water department truck. We'll purchase the oh, water see. department, oh, okay. replace like the, the last one, uh, 1999. So uh, we're just going to move the money in. It's not, I mean, on, on paper, it's really. Yeah, because the the, yeah. the water department enterprise fund and the general fund are two distinct yeah. right accounts and operators. So if it was all one, we could just transfer the truck, and it wouldn't be any. I didn't realize it's the truck not, was going to be reused. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. 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 that's what we did with the last one. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks yeah. for coming. Thanks for uh, giving us an old review. <coughs> I guess we're all set. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are we going to? There are capital projects uh, that we need to discuss. Or? There's a report from the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Do we want to talk about that now? Yeah, I guess so. One of those two page jobs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The second page oh, is yeah, a very yeah. small oh, one. That's yeah. so they can't see the numbers. Everybody put their glasses on. The second page. Yes. Yeah. I think it costs less. You think it costs less when you see smaller numbers? Right. The it looks bigger. It looks better on the screen. Um, so, <coughs> Capital Permit Planning Committee. Um, we're trying to repurpose it a little bit. Um, so we have the members of it are. Um, Fred, Dan, myself, I don't get to both of um, Katie Edwards, Nicholas Jones, and um, we're still short. We're still short too. Um, a couple people resigned that um, hadn't really been involved for, for the past couple of years. Um, but, so we're trying to work on the creation of a 10 year capital plan that will identify projects 10 years out. And the CIPC plans to meet more often to do that instead of this single meeting that's happened the past couple of years in December. Uh, this year, we, we met uh, three times. One of them were, were uh, site visits to um, the highway garage, police station, fire station, um, library, um, and the elementary school. And 
sent. So it was good, I think, for everyone to see the request and see the facilities. Um, and the other change that was made was we adopted a ranking system that was recommended by the, and I think Dan had filed this, uh, by the Massachusetts Association of Town Finance Committees um, and how the projects are ranked. So there's priority A, priority B, and priority C projects. Um, priority A projects are considered urgent, high priority projects, which should be done if at all possible. We interpreted that to mean projects that address safety concerns or compliance issues with state and federal law. Uh, project B, uh, priority B projects are considered high priority projects that should be done as fund it becomes available. These would typically be deteriorated facilities or scheduled replacements for facilities or equipment that don't present a, a safety risk but should be done nonetheless. And priority C projects, um, the committee would consider those worthwhile to be considered if funding is available, but that could be deferred to a subsequent year and we wouldn't have any you know, safety concerns or things like that. Um, on the second page, this is how the committee ranked the projects. Uh, one thing that, that the, the committee made a conscious effort not to look at was cost. Um, because um, I think we just, or the committee decided that if, if we're really looking at the importance of projects to the town, cost isn't necessarily a factor that should be considered. That's a consideration of the finance committee and the select board to, to look at their, their focus is on whether the project is important to be done or not. Because um, some, some of these projects already have grant funding that has already been awarded, but we tried to be true to what we were trying to do. Uh, so priority A projects, those are the urgent high priority projects. Replace the wood oil furnace in the highway garage, $7,500. Um, library handicap accessibility improvements. That's to pay for the design of improvements needed to make the entire building handicap accessible. Replace tires on the loader for the highway department. The pickup truck replacement for the highway department that replaces the 1990 pickup truck that's uh, used to haul the lawnmowers currently, but I don't think it can be anymore unless we fix the transmission. Um, the next two are, are the, the merger projects for the water department. And it looks like we're gonna be putting those up in how we, how we present them. We still need to think about the merger committee is still trying to, to figure that out. And then pick up truck replacement for the water department. That ties in with the highway department as we just talked about. Priority B, high priority projects. Uh, this one becomes available. Uh, design and construction of a new softball baseball field with the sale of the uh, East Waitley School to a developer, the town, the select board um, signed a license agreement with the developer to for the town to have access to that ball field until the time that he needs it for construction or demolition of um, construction until he starts. Um, so that field will eventually be, be uh, not available to the town. Um, there's a request from the fire department to replace the four inch fire hose with five inch fire hose. Um, that would improve the, obviously the firefighting capacity. And I'm told that a lot of the surrounding departments have five inch hose or are going to five inch hose. Yeah, it's so, becoming a standard now on all the new trucks. So that you keep things compatible when you go to a mutual aid or to a fire, mm -hmm. you're all the same. <coughs> so that our new truck come with a five inch hose or did it come with a four? At that time? I think that was a little cool. It's not that new. It, it actually didn't come with any holes on it. I right. had to buy the holes. Oh, right. Well, it's probably the adapter that goes from five down to four. <laughs> and I think they call part of the cost. So, I'm uh, sorry, yeah. Part of the cost is to pay for that now, I think. <coughs> so just, probably. just, uh, I can give you an excerpt of the plan here, but there's a three year plan for, to replace the four inch holes on the three trucks with the five inch yeah. holes. Yeah. Wow. 13750 13, a year. The next, the last priority B 13, project. $13,000 for just the hose, man. Was well, it? I mean, I, I understand it's a really good hose. But it's like a couple hundred feet of hose, like 200 or yeah. 250 feet of hose, so. A lot yeah. of each truck to it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The last project, priority B projects, is a request from the elementary school to replace the carpet the existing carpet in three classrooms with flooring tile and area rugs. Um, the carpet's getting worn out. 
and this would finish that project. Um, priority. Been, there's been two rooms, I think, done already. Yeah. I want to finish the other three off to do the conversion. Three classrooms in the nurse's office. Priority C projects, worthwhile projects to be considered if funding is available. Um, replace siding on the fire station. Um, there's some there's some deterioration in the siding of the fire station. Um, the, the original proposal that was put in front of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, um, I don't know that it had, it was that comfortable with the proposal, but uh, the siding is deteriorated. It's just a matter of figuring out what the right fix is, um, taking into account Taking into account the, the structure, the structure of the building, building and what we think the long-term you know, use of that building will be. Um, another priority C project: replace the front office window air conditioning units with mini splits. That's the front office of the Whaley Elementary School. Um, sidewalk reconstruction and crosswalk installation on Chestnut Plain Road, and redesign and construction of an updated Veterans Memorial. Those are the priority C projects. So that's what the uh, CIPC felt about the projects that were submitted. Um, some of these already have funding. For instance, the sidewalk reconstruction crosswalk on Chestnut Plain Road that's being paid for by a, a complete streets grant. The design <coughs> and construction of a new softball baseball field that's CPA eligible. Um, so I suspect some of that or a lot of that will come from, or will hopefully come from CPA. The first, the first part of that project for the uh, library. Yeah, the feasibility study for the library is is, is a grant currently or? being paid for through the uh, Bob Duda Trust money that was, uh, I guess, bequeathed to the yes. library yeah. uh, when he passed away. So. So the forty-five thousand is just for design. Yep. Right. To pay for the design of improvements, correct. not designed and improvements. Correct. Okay. You're reading that correct. So, what is the cost? Do they have any idea what? Well, when they get the, a design. Okay. When they get a design, then they'll know. The rule of thumb is that design is about 10% of construction costs. So, 450000 I don't think it's that high. Well, I mean, that's, well, what, I don't think that's, that's, that's what they base it on. I've heard that before from you, Fred. Yeah. Well, we have a million dollars, but uh, I, I've oh. seen somewhere about 100 to 150 range, maybe. That seems. Because you're not, you're, you're, you're talking not just the, the lift for it, some alterations to the building, I think, as well to accommodate that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But for 450, you could put a wing on that place. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it's in there. Gosh. The only other thing I got to, it's, you know, some of this stuff is obviously going to pay, be paid for in other ways, but I think yeah. we need to have some kind of numbers for the water infrastructure expansion. Yeah. Yeah. Fire hydrant stuff. We will before we make a decision on how many of these other projects You're we're right. going to try and fund. You're yep. Absolutely right. How come we don't just offer a eight for the water department truck? And we don't what? Offer a eight instead of twelve. <laughs> well, we could. Ah, let's lowball. Yeah, yeah, let's lowball. Yeah. Do that. Lowball the. How'd we get to twelve anyway? Probably the book value. Yeah, it was the truck. Yeah. 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 Is it the book value or trade value? Hundred miles yeah. on it. Somebody gave me, said, you know, we'll give if you buy a truck from us, we'll give you twelve thousand for your old one. So that's what they're using for a topic. I would guess. I don't know. Getting good on Kelly see. Blue Book and uh, maybe. So in terms of the the water merger part of it, the merger we meet we met last week, right? Yeah. Um, and we asked Wayne to work with the engineer to provide us some more updated numbers because um, it's been a little while since um, I've had those numbers. But we're looking. I don't know if we want to get into it, but total project cost will probably be around, let's say, 375, um, with For a good majority of that hopefully coming from um, hookup case. Yeah. It's five grand a hookup. 
45? Five. No, 45 hookups? 40. 40. 40. 44. The town has four. 40, the town has four. Yeah, but so we're going to, so the, the town itself yeah. is going to wind up paying the enterprise fund for hookups. For our hookups. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So 44 times five grand? Only half yep. Money. Yeah. Yep. So yep. that's over half. Mm -hmm. And then the rest will be floated as a bond. Well, yeah, we'll have to figure it out. And then that responsibility. Is it worth doing it as a bond? Mm -hmm. We'll have to probably see the numbers. And then the town is going to get paid back the money by the enterprise fund, or that's to be determined? Well, the way that the way that the, the committee was thinking about it was that the ob the obligation uh, to provide domestic water uh, will be paid for by private hookup fees for the hookup fees in the enterprise fund. So there were discussions w while the committee was meeting whether it made sense to have a fire pump installed wow, in the pump this. house. Um, that would that would kick on when the hydrant was opened. Um, so what we're trying to do in terms of how we present the project is that the, the cost to provide domestic water, yeah. um, and then the fire protection aspect of it would be a separate cost, um, likely um, presented as the town funding it. Yeah. We'll give people the option <coughs> whether they want to do that or not. But you don't um, have much choice, do you? Well, we'll see what the cost sure. is. You can vote now. But we'll, no, yeah. we'll want to see what the cost is. Right. they got to see what the cost is. Right. If the town votes yes. They got no right. estimates at all? No. Um, no, that's what we asked okay. them to go back for the numbers for because everything was mixed together. At the beginning of the process. See, uh, right now, the uh, way, according to Wayne, the way it looks is that for the domestic hub, the, the domestic water supply, it appears as though the hookup fees will take care of that. Will come pretty close. Will come close. real close to okay. the enterprise to take care of that, that whole for thing. The rest. The fire protection kicks that up. Yes. So, but the fire protection is uh, is not a mandatory thing, and mm. so we can. <coughs> I, I mean, I, if I, you could, I understand what you're doing. Not man, it's not mandated, but it's still no, good. But, right. And and from a from a, a taxpayer way of looking at it is, I'd rather pay. I'd rather have my tax money go toward fire protection than all the money I've already spent for town water for 35 years that I've never seen any of that water. Right. No, when I needed a new well, mm -hmm. nobody, you know, nobody in the town gave me any money to put a new well in. No, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. No. 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 Absolutely. And that's why the division of these two is so it's probably because a, a, you know how close thing. it was last time. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. So if you were to wrap that big number into one warrant or one article there, it there may be a problem. And, and and then the domestic supply of water would be unavailable. Yeah. And so by splitting them, all we have to really go to the town for is that fire the fire action, the fire pump. Right. And the, well, whatever else is involved. And, and the twenty thousand in the hook piece for the domestic water. But, but it does make sense to do it now while you're doing Part of the project, you right? Well oh yeah, you must well do it. Small yeah. sure. well, I agree. Do the rest. Yeah. Right. Of course, the, the benefit would to the town is you know we have the four buildings in the center yeah. town that were improvement for fire yeah. protection for us. So yeah. it's not like it's just for residential mm -hmm. fire protection. And uh, center school, library, town hall should be three. It's three. We own Spike's house. It's Spike's house. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, Spike's house. Spike's house. That's four. Yeah. Can, can I ask one question? But sure. Sure. Um, I know it's not the most expensive item on the list, but the replace the wood slash oil furnace in the highway garage. Um, I assume they'll kind of put in whatever's closest to what they already have. But if, is there what? any thought about like doing that place with the 
with many splits, so it's not, you know, so that you're not burdening so much carbon. Like, they, they, I mean, there are lots of alternatives. We don't necessarily, that, and have we at least looked to see if other alternatives might be he's more energy at, efficient and? He's looked at the reason, or given us the reason for still replacing it with a wood oil furnace. Oh, the, the, oh, the replacement is the wood. It's not that there's it's a wood a oil wood. furnace there. Yes, yeah, there, there is. is. There is, yeah. there is. And, yes. it, and replacing it with a wood oil furnace. Yes, right. Oh, okay. And the reasons for doing that and staying that way is the uh, basically the cost of getting rid of all the trees that he has to pick upside the road because there is no place around here that takes that. We can't dump it anywhere. Oh, okay. So basically what the highway department does is they collect all that wood that's burnable and burn it up in there. Okay, so this and they replace with something like right. efficient it's going to be more efficient than what they've got now. It'll be and just as efficient. The reason is it's falling apart now. Yeah. That's why they need it. Oh, but yeah. that runs on wood during the day. Mm -hmm. And at nighttime, they fire up the wood box and they have a high low temp mm -hmm. so that the oil will kick in once that fire box gets down too low in the wintertime, which saves on oil. Yeah. So the, the cost okay. of the Okay, good. So, so they have really thought about it. Oh, yes. Okay. They looked into it both ways. Okay. It's a good, efficient unit when it's set up properly like that. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the unit is pretty efficient. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest problems is the rest of the building is not efficient. You know, the overhead doors are mm -hmm. darn, aren't tight. The, they only heat one side of it. They heat the right, office right. and they heat the right hand side. The left hand side is the unheated side. Yeah. And they still burn a lot of wood and some oil to just keep half of it warm. It's not an efficient building. Well, there's a reason for keeping the other side cool, too. Yeah. They don't want to heat it. No, they don't want to heat it. But. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. So I think the next step for this is to, I'll, I'll sit down and figure out. Well, we'll figure out the cost. We'll try to figure out the cost for the for the water merger, which we're going to do anyways. Yeah. Um, and then figure out uh, possible funding scenarios for these these items. Mm -hmm. um, we can discuss those. We will do that on at the next twelve on the twelve. Yeah. Are um, we good? Yes. We we'll adjourn, Fred. Uh, we we'll come back to the, the Frontier Capital Improvement Program if, if your committee wants to do that. Uh, I've been involved from the beginning since we started this exercise to come up with the funding and different scenarios for over the past year. Paul has been involved since part of the Finance Committee the last couple months to get their input on it. So if anybody has questions about this, uh, I guess I'll try to answer them. If not, well, then I, I guess I can deal with it or we can as scary as to be prepared in the future. But uh, if you have questions, concerns right now, maybe I can answer them for mm -hmm. to explain how we got where we, what we did here. Um, I think that we got this sheet, we can kind of review it and go over the whole thing with the budget once they get the budget. The, the thing <coughs> that, to, to focus on is, is this is a, a program for a 10-year program <coughs> that is supported by projects the last page is the projects uh, the 10-year program uh, to, to implement all these projects and the scenario here shows the funding to do that each of the 10 years and you can see Whaley share is uh, sitting from year. as a Whaley person we should vote for them no matter what That's because right. it's so well, inexpensive well, Right. We shouldn't even think. We shouldn't even discuss it. And, and well, what we should discuss. What yeah. we're doing with Whaley? Yes. Yeah. Let me just say, what Whaley share is uh, there's a request to the capital improvement no, community. community preservation, preservation committee to fund nine thousand <coughs> up to about the twenty one thousand, and 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 to kind of continue that <coughs> effort for the next nine years or ten years. So the impact on, on the town is going to be from twelve thousand to. Yep. 15, yeah, fifteen thousand. I think the echo will probably say we should we should be in full support of this, right. even though the other towns will be barking. 
yeah, we, yeah. we should drive this as hard as we can. Yep. So, uh, yeah, we've heard of that meeting. But Parfield's kind of a problem. Oh, but, you're gonna, but, but part of it you were talking before with the 600000 that we're going to spend on the new track, yeah, that you're going to use other monies, or try to use other monies right. for our right. portion, right? Our portion, right. 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 correct. Right. 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 My only question with the track is, is why would you do something first that doesn't benefit the most students? That's my question about the track. So if we bring Bob Smith in and help I'll tell Bob Smith that. You and I understand, well, I understand track's a money maker. I understand that aspect of it too. If you know how many kids- I understand that, I understand that. that. But, it's, but, it, but it's, it, it's fallen apart. So it's been repaired. The guy that inspected it last says, I cannot believe it's still, it must have been built super, super good, but it's also been repaired pretty well too you know you just can't keep on repairing the same parts of it that are falling apart and I think that um, you know one of the one of the things that we we are most concerned with in this whole project is oversight yeah continued oversight long term who's going to hold someone's feet to the fire should there be a problem and I think that's Fred was talking about, or would talk about, that there's been money allocated for an oversight for the state projects. Yeah. Yeah. The track, um, the other big projects, we have oversight money for those state projects. We're not gonna have- First couple of years. Yeah. First yeah. couple of years in a major project, and then there is an oversight amount in the budget for that to either hire somebody, uh, full-time uh, position or contract, whatever. It won't be the so facilities manager because yeah. he's yeah. got enough on his plate with the other things. More than enough. Right. Okay. Any last thoughts? So have a motion to uh, make the motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Uh, All right. Right.